Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's VOD review day, and we got a banger this week. I was really looking forward to reviewing this when I uh, when I finally got to watch it. Um, this is going to be a game from last month's monthly or last week's rather monthly checkup. It's not one of the games that we saw on stream. So if you were in attendance or you watched the stream last week, you uh, are not spoiled. Um, I am going to talk about the results of it because uh, if you really go want to find out, you can go look in the bracket. But um, this was a uh, Hebe model versus no Izzle, a match that did not make it to the stream actually. Um, but I, it was so close and it was such a big win for the, the Victor no Izzle that uh, I had to go back and, and watch it and re-record it for YouTube. And I'm glad I did because it was a banger of a game and a huge win for no Izzle. So uh, because of that, we're going to be watching this from her perspective. Uh, we're going to do the format a little bit differently than we've done it in past months where we traditionally we've gone through both players games and we've rewatched the same game twice. This game is significantly longer than some of the matches we've reviewed in past weeks. Uh, I believe it's like half an hour long. So uh, because we're going to be pausing and talking about a lot of stuff, there's it's just going to take way too long to go through both players games. So we're just going to watch all five of the games from no Whistle's point of view. And we're just going to talk about her side of things, mostly because we already watched the Hebe model match last week and we talked about him enough already, I think, <laughs> but uh, also just because we have to, it's just, I think a new format. I want to try where we just follow one player and we focus on their perspective so that we can actually have like longer matches on the stream and we can actually not leave those matches out of uh, contention for doing them on review weeks. All right. So first move, on the board, double blue. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I'm not really sure what the best move is here because there's no where you can place this double blue that will give you a good combo setup right out of the gate, which is like the most important thing uh, in the opening. So there's a couple of options. One option that came to mind for me right away was uh, this double blue move right here, um, just to make a, a, an empty clear for sure but it will open things up this blue this double blue is not really contributing to a combo setup anyway um, and it will expose a yellow so that maybe we can get our blue yellow going or our red yellow setup going something like that because uh, that's the other thing about this top line is there's only two yellows here and they they're not conducive to a, like a red yellow setup because the yellows are doubled up but the reds are not uh i don't know why i'm showing on heavy motto's side sorry about that we're focusing on no whistle today but that's the move that I that I came up with. Another maybe move you could maybe do if you want to go along the same idea is just do like a tuck in here and just horizontal. But uh, I think I like exposing the yellow more. So I think this is the move that I would do. Um, there's definitely some other th considerations like you could maybe just go here. Basically anything where you're not blocking a red or a yellow. Like there's that's you could do pretty much anything. But I think that exposing the yellow, even if it's an empty clear on the first move, is just very... Uh, it's just conducive to giving you more options for setup so you can get to that first combo. Um, it's possible that maybe doing something else would be better. I'm really not sure. It's there's no great amazing move. This isn't there's no way to contribute this to a, a combo, like I said, but um, I think that would probably be your best bet. So let's see what uh, what these players do. We'll talk about Heaving Models first move too to see if they both do the same thing, but we'll see what Noah's all does. Okay, they both actually take different moves than I did and different moves from each other. So Himimoto puts his double blue uh, here on column two. Um, Noizel instead putting hers on column five. Uh, that's an interesting choice to me because it not only does it not contribute to a setup, but um, um, well, actually it kind of does. And I'll explain that in a second now that I think about it. It is just dangerous to have like, you know, to raise the height of your fourth and fifth columns, your center columns like this without a good reason. So doing it this way, if you don't, if you leave this to linger, the longer that this blue, this double blue sits here, then the more likely it is that garbage is going to fall on it, disrupt it. Um, but not only does she have this option to underclear if that should happen, but this is also a little ambitious. But she, I think what she's hoping for is to get like a, uh, not that color, that would be the wrong color, to get like a T set up here. She can get another it'll double blue and it has to be a double blue. It's the only way that this will work. Then she gets to tuck it under and she gets a T set up. And to her, maybe that's... That it really is probably the only way that you can make this double blue contribute to a setup in any way. And I guess that was her line of thinking when she made this move. I would have to imagine. That's the only thing that I can see. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know, double blue is like the rarest pill you can in the game. So a setup that, that like, uh, depends on that is ambitious, certainly. But it is 
the only move that makes a setup, so I can't knock it too much. Um, this might actually end up, we'll see if this ends up being, uh, what, if this ends up clearing as a, as a T, if she actually does get the double blue and goes forward from here. She's gonna block it off pretty much right away. But, uh, yeah, just, now she's a double, at least a red blue in the center because she got that double. It's a free combo, love that. And then she'll take her combo in the center, of course. Already setting up another, that was an amazing setup, I just wanna go back and look at that for a second. Uh, so she sets up the blue here, I guess knowing that she's gonna, the plan is to clear this red and drop it down. She needs one more blue uh, in one of these spaces, either here or here, and I guess she's gonna put the red blue down just like in this spot here, like that, uh, and that's her gonna be her plan, and then as soon as she does that, the blue will drop down. It'll make a piece of garbage, but it's a very quick combo, just so soon after the last one. Double setups, unfortunately, the garbage... Uh, oh, that's interesting. The garbage is going to uh, cause some problems here blocking this setup off. She ends up going this way with the double blue. I wonder if it'd be better maybe to put it like this and get a setup out of it. That might have been maybe a little more interesting. I'm not really sure. Uh, especially given that she has this double blue coming up, she could have just uh, put it up here afterwards and made a combo out of it. So, I, I mean, I, I don't hate the horizontal setup either. It's just easy to skim that off, but it's... Uh, I guess she's thinking maybe she'll get a yellow red and then she can do a combo like a like a blue yellow L like something like that and then it will uh if, assuming that you get a yellow piece down here and then it'll like clear and then go like that and then drop down something like that that's maybe what she was thinking not really sure but uh yeah I wonder if this double blue will end up coming across like this to uh make an L setup to get rid of all of the center and to clear this garbage piece off let's see if she goes for that ends up skimming off the top, but she gets another double blue and she makes the setup I was talking about, so that's great. Um, makes another combo quickly. Everything here is looking pretty straightforward. That left side's looking treacherous. Oh, that's very... Bad luck. That, uh, if I go back for a second, that blue garbage here is very lucky. If this blue garbage is something else, that's really dangerous. Um, this is sort of a perfect example of why it's dangerous to leave setups for too long. Um, sometimes you don't really have a choice because uh, you just don't get the pill needed to complete the setup and get the combo. But, uh, I mean, in this case, she actually had quite a few options because she has the blue-yellow, uh, this blue-yellow here sticking out like this, and then she has she had, she can just put a blue-yellow uh, in this fashion to get a drop, the yellow, the yellow drop down. Um, but if she was to get a blue red, she would also have the option to uh, to go up this way and do a blue red something like that, and then the red would drop drop down as well. So having multiple options is nicer because it's just more chances that you're going to be able to knock this combo down. In fact, uh, the way it's set up, the blue red would be would give her a triple, which is great. Um, but as you can see here, if this blue uh, garbage up here had been a yellow or something like that, that's <laughs> that looks ugly. If this blue is a, an off color piece. Uh, I don't even know how you begin to clear this away. So she got a little lucky there. That was uh, a blue garbage. But uh, um, if if there was any way to do it, she was doing it the right way. Definitely keeping her options open, giving herself a setup that um, can be knocked down with uh, multiple different pills. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's the game. That's how it's going to go sometimes. She'll get the combo from that garbage as well. Center was looking scary, so she will just sort of responsibly clear it down. I definitely think that was correct. Uh, that garbage, I'm just looking to see if that makes a difference. I don't think so. This yellow is actually almost helpful because maybe now she'll be able to do a yellow blue setup, something like this, uh, and then a yellow red would. Uh, like this would be amazing. She'd get us an awesome T here. So the yellow, this yellow garbage almost helps her in a way. Well, that's a little less helpful, but not horrible. Yeah, and it looks like she's going to try to do exactly that. The garbage misses and she gets her T. That's sweet. And it even combos into a horizontal. She'll get a triple out of that. That's awesome. And yeah, she'll just take the center combo as quickly as possible for survival reasons. Good play there. Sees this double red at the last second to go for the T. I want to actually go back and just mention that really quickly. It looks like she's thinking here with the blue for a second. Oh, I didn't. If you look, there's almost like a moment of 
maybe not hesitation, but she definitely saw the red in the next box and uh, went to get saw this coming, and then just decided to make a clear just to get to this red piece before the garbage blocked it off. And she'll make that tea. Fortunate garbage in for her. Finds it. That was a great find. I didn't even see that. Or blues into the yellows here in the center of her board. I guess that's been set up for quite a while if we go back. I mean, ever since these reds cleared out, but I'm sure she had this blue yellow uh, situation in her head here, like just to get it cleared like that. Uh, I'm sure she had that idea for many moves behind before she even cleared these reds away. That's awesome foresight from her. That's the sort of deep combo thinking that, uh, that top players tend to have, I find. Um, you have to, sometimes, obviously you have to be focused on the combo setups you have in front of you and attend to them in time. Um, but investing in your future is really important too. Uh, this yellow-blue that she placed here was almost certainly on purpose because she wanted to make this setup so that eventually she could reap the rewards of uh, having like a fat log down here maybe, uh, or even just dropping a fat log down if she never got the blue-yellow she needed. So, yeah, uh, I it, it's always hard to tell because you never know the player's thoughts, obviously. Sometimes these things just kind of happen organically and the player's not even really considering it until it's right there in front of them and they have the opportunity to take the setup. But I have a feeling, knowing Noah's old, that she planned this ahead. And uh, if you let it play out, obviously she uh, she ends up getting the, uh, getting the setup here. At the very least... Oh, that double blue could have been amazing. That double blue could have... Oh, whoops. Oh, that's an unfortunate keyboard shortcut. Uh, closed. Yeah. Did we uh, change shortcut to nothing? 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 Okay, cool. Apply. Okay. All right, we're good. We're golden. Let's, let's find our place again, and we'll get back to that. So yeah, this is the double blue I was talking about. Uh, sorry, we'll... Uh... So this double blue here that she has, um, obviously if she, well, she put it here to just sort of try to clear this garbage away. I don't know if she was just uh, tunnel visioned a little bit or something, but I, I think this is probably a big opportunity. Maybe she just wanted to leave the, the fat log opportunity here to do uh, this, but I think that um, just going blue, blue, you take an L and then the yellows fall onto here uh, to get a, a triple would have been huge. And I mean, if you can take it, you probably should. Other considerations might have been here to clear off the side, but I think if you have a setup that good and you get the piece you exactly need, you just have to take that. But uh, she'll take it in a moment here, as we saw. Oh, that's unfortunate. She had a double blue coming. I think she just panicked a little bit, not knowing quite what to do with that piece. And that happens sometimes. I mean, these players are playing at an insane pace. So, uh, yeah, that's a mistake for sure. I mean, you have to be wary of the setups you have, and you have to kind of be aware of what pieces you're waiting for in cases like this. Sorry about that. All right, sorry. Anyway, uh, back to it. Like I was saying, um, yeah, it's difficult to see those kinds of setups when you're um, when you're in the middle of a game playing at the kind of pace that Noizel's playing at. Um, but it's important to be wary of the uh, of the setups that you have and the pieces that you're waiting for, so that you don't miss opportunities like that. It doesn't seem like a big deal. Like she got the double anyway, and and that's still good, of course. But Especially when you get to a higher level and you get start playing against really good players, you you have to make sure you're not missing things like this. Uh, small advantages make a huge difference in tempo and just in uh, um, in terms of like how where the game ends up, how the game ends up playing out. Um, yeah, insane pace is right. Yeah, she, a lot of the top players are playing so fast these days. Um, but yeah, it's uh, even at that pace, you really especially against good players, can't afford to miss even little things like that. Every little edge you give up is just uh, one step closer to giving the game away sometimes. And even if you don't see it in the moment, in two minutes from now, you could be feeling the effects of missing, you know, an extra piece of garbage that could have blocked off a combo that would have put you way ahead. 
So you really have to be on, mindful of that. You know, that's not to say that you should beat yourself up for every mistake you make because we're all human and it's difficult to catch everything when you're trying to play as fast as possible. But um, yeah, just it's just important to know that those little things do matter um, and you shouldn't just blow it off as, uh, you know, it's whatever, it's not a big deal because it's probably a bigger deal than, than you think it is. But anyway, let's continue. With Clears off the side, I like that. Opens up the center. Really would love to see this the, the sixth column go away, but she's just combos, so that's fine. And then she responsibly clears that down. Love that. Get some unfortunate garbage here. Ooh, I like that. I, I'm almost now that this yellow fell onto this red. I wonder if she gets yellow reds. I would be thinking to do like, uh, like yellow red situations like this, and then does require three yellow reds, but that's sort of the setup I'm already looking for with this weird piece of garbage that, that fell here, um, especially now that this red has covered it. Like, before the red showed up, if we go back a second, just a moment for that, if we go back to where this yellow fell, and uh, you could have gone, like, yeah, yellow, red, yellow, the, you know, the basic double setup, or maybe even, like, yellow, or no, nope, yellow, red and then get a triple something like this but uh once the red garbage falls and even if before the red garbage falls you could still consider doing the horizontal because honestly you can just put any blue piece up here and then you just do yellow reds and uh like how do we help uh you just no nope. i'm gonna get the hang of this eventually i swear you'll just do the yellow reds and then eventually it uh it will uh end up uh playing it like it, it'll end up getting the combo anyway um and uh, if the garbage it's a lot more difficult to disrupt and if everything ever does happen you always do have you know other options to clear the horizontal from either side so uh we'll see if she ends up taking that idea though ends up putting a red up here yeah she just had a double red set up there that's definitely easier double red set up of course Always making moves uh, that are trying to get her combos. That's obviously hugely important. Sweet fat log, I love that. That's unfortunate yellow garbage here. Double blues are, are going to accomplish. Luckily, get some more yellow and another. That's so lucky. And she'll. Oh, she doesn't take it. I guess maybe. I. That's interesting. I think. I wonder if she actually saw the next box on this. So this yellow blue falls, and immediately my seeing the yellow blue here, I would have immediately would have gone yellow blue like this to get the combo and to get a triple. Um, I want it, but if you look like if we start it again, she kind of hesitates on this pill. It already falls a couple spots before she flips it over. And I wonder if it's because she saw this yellow blue in the next box. That's uh, <laughs> again, it's always so hard to tell when you don't know what their th you know the player's thoughts and you're not in their head. But I wonder if she actually did see that and make that decision consciously. Um, that's really interesting because in this case, I I actually do agree with this move that she made. Where if you know that next yellow blue is coming, just knock this setup down, and then you're a yellow blue away from getting the triple. Um, but uh, yeah, that's crazy. And if she gets another yellow blue, then she's just laughing. Wonder if she'll yeah she ends up taking this down not as good of a combo obviously but uh she will eventually take it it's a really weird setup she's been left with she gets her yellow blue set up on the left that's great she's just killing it this game if you do a quick check over on hebe's board things are not looking good and i think that's very much comes down to the the combo setups that she's been finding and she's sort of had this advantage from the start of the game and she's executed the way you need to uh, to take advantage of that. But I would actually like that play. Gets the yellow blitz and plays it right. Not my favorite thing about NES Dr. Mario, but hey, if that's the version you're playing, you gotta do what it takes to win. Soon she'll get this red blue set up here, that's great. Her board's really clean. I'm, you know, now, now, of course there's garbage now, but she has a red yellow set up here, which she does find. Wonderful play. Is that all the way to the bottom? And yeah, at this point, I think it's pretty smooth. Going to be pretty smooth sailing for her, more or less. EB model certainly capable of, uh, of 
making comebacks from these positions, but man, it's not gonna be easy. She is so far ahead at this point. Even you know, Phoebe's got the virus count on her. Her board is just so clean by comparison. Find another combo, maybe she'll do the blue yellow set up here. Bury these over to the left. I don't know about that. She could have had a combo here and she would make progress. Garbage. Okay, she'll now take the setup I was referring to. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, her board does not have a lot of setups on it. Now, this is sort of the danger, the danger point. Like, right now, Noizel has this blue red setup here, maybe, but other than that, she doesn't really have like other than this blue red setup here and, and also here. Um, maybe she's putting this blue here to drop it down if the glades get cleared out. That's certainly an option. You can just put it, the blue dropping down there once you have a red up here. But beyond that, like beyond the, this left side has has this yellow blue setup that's been totally blocked. Um, sort of a red yellow thing forming here, but it's not a great spot. And all, even though Hebe Motto is not in a great spot either. Um, this is definitely like the, the inflection point where you have to really worry about a comeback happening. Um, she's just got to find a combo from something because otherwise, uh, if Hebe Mato starts finding setups and finding combos and stun locking her when she's this high up on the board, um, a comeback's totally reasonable in a case like this. And you'll see this happen a lot in a lot of, uh, high level matches where, um, you get, you know, you, you feel like you're comfortably ahead, but then you get to that point where you run out of gas, and then that's when the other player can turn things back around on you because you don't have combos to stall them out anymore. And suddenly they're free to actually make their setups, and then they slowly get... They have so much ammunition on their board, like Hebe Motto has here, that one, one combo releases another combo, releases another combo, and then uh, suddenly things are way more even than you thought. And that sort of, um, that sort of momentum shift... Um, is something that uh, I've found a lot in games that I've played and uh, that I've seen in a lot of matches uh, in the monthly checkup as well. Um, so there's definitely something to be mindful of when you're playing and you get into this position where you're ahead. And uh, especially if you've ever found in your games like, oh, I get so far ahead and then I fall, fall behind and I don't know why. It's weird. It's like they just suddenly send all this garbage to me. Well, this is pretty much why. It, it, it's completely normal. It happens. It's just a part of the game at this point. Um, so... It's it's something to be aware of and to prepare for. When you feel like you've run out of gas, you should get ready for the opponent to drop a lot of garbage on you and plan accordingly. And it looks like she Noizel is going to find some kind of setup here. I'm actually really interested to see what she does. Because barring getting a blue easy blue red setup, um, she's got yellow blues coming. I'm gonna I'm interested to see what she does here. Love that. Moves the res the last second. She doesn't want to break this setup, and now Hebe Motto is really putting her board in a weird spot. Wow, what? A... <laughs> okay, that was an amazing uh, gutsy play here. This blue red could have easily, easily, easily just been a simple a double that would have opened up the the blues down here. But instead, uh, it was looking for the bigger play to sort of try to make a comeback here, and she ends up putting it as you'll see. Oh, nope, don't want that. She'll, she puts it right like this as a horizontal setup. She needs a, as, now as soon as she gets another blue, it's gonna. Well, you saw it before, and I'll let it play out so you can see exactly what happens. But uh, she's gonna get that blue, and it's gonna just drop the red down, and then the blues down into this horizontal. That was absolutely intentional. That was uh, a great find from her. I don't think I would have seen that myself. Nether could find at the top of the board. Not a, I don't know if you saw that horizontal setup. But, uh, not one I would have seen here. But just seeing these two blues back to back, she all she's thinking is get a red up here, and then just uh, do the blues like this. Whether it's a blue red blue blue or something, or even just a horizontal blue. Um, yeah. So the, it's it's interesting to see something like this. How players will see a shape like this. And uh, they'll just see like horizontals and verticals, and they'll make setups out of them. Um, once you start to see setups like this, it they become pretty clear. But even I missed this one. I not not for a second did I think like, oh, I'll make a 
horizontal here. This is great vision from Noizel for sure. That double blue, yeah, knocks it down. But she is loose. She is falling behind here. Like her board is very messy, and no, and Evie's got um some of his viruses are now exposed, whereas she's just completely buried. She's just hoping to get the pieces she needs to start comboing back and shift the momentum back again in her favor. Double will be a good start, for sure. It's fine over there. She's gonna take that combo even though uh, it's gonna be garbage here. That's okay. She just needs to do anything. This is huge. She's already on her, on her way back down the board, and now Hibimato is finding himself buried. This is sort of like the momentum shifting I was talking about. Finding the double she needs to find. Very good. Now that this yellow fell here, I wasn't even going to say anything, but I now that this yellow falls here, I wonder if she is going to find um, a T like this or something where she can just put like this yellow red coming up, for example, could go like this, and then another yellow red could go like this, and then a double yellow or a yellow blue even could go there and just make a T. If she gets one more blue piece up here, then that makes another combo. Um, yeah, I, I think that's what she's going to see here now that this yellow has come down. I really hope so. At least, let's see if she goes for that. Unfortunately, the red's going to block it. Let's see she... Oh, but she'll get this yellow. Will she just take the horizontal? Wow, she's getting super sunlocked and she's one virus away. I feel like she's probably going to lose very shortly, but... Let's see how... Wow, she does not even want to clear this yet. She's going to finally get the yellow-red. I guess that's what she was waiting for. But I wonder if she should have waited that long. She really needs to make, you know, basically any combo she can get to potentially block um, Motto from finishing the level here. That, that garbage, unfortunately, doesn't block it, so... She's going to cover it over and, uh finish it off here. That's really unfortunate. Like, I guess Hibimoto, it looked like Noizel was ahead at the start, and Hibimoto really was able to come back. I just want to go back to see if there's ever a time, like, where exactly Hibi really pulled away from from uh, Noizel here. I guess he was ahead from, like, this in this position, Noizel looks great. And then, I don't know what happened. Starts getting some really weird garbage at the top of the board, and he just starts making progress. Huh. And then he just keeps pulling ahead even further from there. He's making empty clears like that. I don't want to go too in depth into Hibimoto's board because we're supposed to be watching Noizel here, but um, I think the biggest difference here is that um, Hibimoto, even though he was uh, looking really rough at the start and didn't really win the opening per se. The play that followed that really prioritized like clearing viruses, and it's possible that maybe Noizel's play really didn't take that into account as much as it could have. Like a lot of the combos she's making are uh, um, are pretty empty. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it here. Because I do, I definitely believe that uh, we're not going to rewatch the entire game or anything, but I definitely believe that there is a cost to uh, prioritizing big setups to make triples and quads over just the the double that makes a progress and clears a virus or two on your board. Um, I think making progress to uh, to the end game is really underrated sometimes, um, especially in high level play. To be honest, um, you know people are very obsessed with combos, and combos are obviously very important because you cannot fall behind on combos because they will block off your access to the viruses. But the whole reason that's good is because you need access to the viruses to clear them. So you should also try to prioritize that as much as you can as well. It's sort of a, a, a you know, a balancing act of prior, when to prioritize combos and when to prioritize viruses and also how to do both at the same time if you can, which is ideal. Um, and that could have been part of the issue here for in this game for Nuizel where she just did not... Uh, she did not prioritize viruses enough, perhaps. We'd have to really analyze this more in depth to uh, 
to try to find certain points maybe where she could have done things differently. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of making a slightly better move than the good move she actually made. But And we're not going to do that right now. But um, yeah, I think that that was very likely to be part of the issue with this game for her. Um, it's so important to prioritize both viruses and combos. You have to be able to do it all at once because if, if you can't and the other person can, then they're probably going to beat you. Uh, they're just going to make more progress on the board than you um, and uh, they're going to make it to end game. And at some point, if their board is clear enough and, and, and nice enough, um, no amount of garbage in the world is going to stop them from, from completing the end game. So you gotta, you gotta focus on both. They're both very important. Anyway, let's, uh, go to the back to, let's go to the next game here after, uh, he motto. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No spoilers, please. Whoa. Okay. Easy we'll go to the next one. Okay. First move yellow blue. So, uh, I think the obvious move here. In general, it's just going to be yellow blue because it starts a yellow blue double setup. Very simple. No need to make it more complicated than that. Um, you could technically go blue yellow, I suppose, and try to clear up the center. But I think prioritizing the edge is probably uh, slightly, slightly better here. Um, the main reason you wouldn't want to do like uh, no, nope, like uh, yellow blue here or yellow blue like this is just because these aren't proper setups. They're not proper doubles. The blue is sort of more stacked than the yellow. So it's just not going to clear as a double. So the pretty clear move here is to do this. You could tuck it under, I guess, but that's just slower. I think I'd rather just pile it on top um, to play as quick, play at a quicker pace. Um, but we'll see if that's the move that these uh, these two take. Oh, interesting. Hebe Mato stacks over here. So Noizel took the move that I said, which seemed obvious to me, and Hebe elected to go over here to the right. I would really love to know the the idea behind this. I feel like the first move of the game is probably the most thought through move of the game because you get that little opening pause to look at the board and have a minute without before no one can move to actually think about what you're going to do. So I feel like nobody makes a move like this and completely at random because they had no time to think. He had all the time to think about this. So I wish I could know what he was thinking and what his rationale is with a move like that because it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so knowing Hibimato as the great player that he is, I'm sure there's something to this that I'm just not seeing. I'd really be interested to know. Uh, if you have any ideas, feel free to uh, um, chat and chat if you're watching live, or just comment in the YouTube video if you see any sort of uh, um, rationale here that that you think you might know what he was thinking. Because I I don't see it, but um, yeah, I think Noah's will definitely made the better move here for sure. <laughs> And already you can see, oh, actually, maybe that is part of why he did that. So <laughs> Super Dr. Zebra says red access, but that's not what I'm seeing here. I, 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 you would make a good point there that this does give access to red if he can clear it out. But uh, this might have actually been intentional. Um, this is another uh, roof strat that he's pulling off, like we saw last week is against Snipe. Um, it's possible that he did this because he saw the potential for an easy roof setup. And you can see he put like a double blue and a blue red here like this. Um, it looks like since uh, he saw the opportunity, he uh, he just went for it and he just decided to set up a roof on the right um, to see if that would uh, uh, help against Nuizel, I guess. I'm still a little back and forth on the roof strats. I don't really know them all too well. I know that there's very specific instances where you can really set it up and ideally you'd like to set it up on both sides of the board because setting up it on just one half of the board is really not good. You really need to make the full roof on both sides for it to really be effective. Um, but if you can get it, um, if anyone who saw Snipe versus TV motto in the monthly checkup last month, last week, um, they both had to start using roof strats on each other and uh, it ended up being a really, really close set. Um, but, uh, if one of them, if either one of them had decided not to go for the roofs that they did, then they probably, that person probably would have lost. So it's quickly becoming a really popular strat in, uh, high level play. I don't love what it does for the game, but, uh, I, I don't think it's just like a super easy thing you can do in every game. I think it really depends on the layout of the board, certain criteria for when you can go for it, when you can't and how to do it properly. So it's, uh, it's, you know, there's some merit to it for sure. And I think 
we'll, we'll see if it works out for Hebe now, but that's very clearly what this first move was about. Blue, yellow. He's just trying to build up on the right so that he can make the roof on the right side because you can see this yellow red here definitely there's no reason you would do this unless you were trying to set up a roof it would just block off your setup it would be silly so yeah i think that's clearly the the rationale there as it turns out anyway we're more analyzing noisel's game here but uh, i just wanted to make a note of that because that was so strange uh, but it, now a couple moves later it all starts to make sense as uh it's it often tends to work out that way when you're watching good players anyway let's continue <laughs> Yeah, she's, uh, I mean, I have no, nothing nothing to really comment on here. She's just playing great, getting a little garbage. Let's get a little bit more, but she gets to set up in the center first. Oh, wow, and Hibimana's board is just blocked off. This roof stat really didn't work out. This is why you need to get it on both sides for it to really be effective, I feel. Yeah, and so Hibimana's having trouble finding garbage, and Liz is just kind of running away with it as a result. Wow, he actually survived that, and he unblocked the left side. That's incredible. But now he's going to get really stunlocked. Oh, guess that's center garbage on him. Yeah, this is insane. She's already halfway down the board. She's almost totally uncontested. Oh, wow. That's an unfortunate misdrop. She definitely did not know that. She's just running away with it. Much better game from her. This is exactly why you still need to keep up on combos because uh, uh, it can. Uh, this is what happens. This is what the game looks like if you don't make enough combos against your opponent. Hebe Mod is starting to finally uh, make a bit, amount a bit of a comeback here. Yeah, she's not finding herself in any kind of sticky situations here. She's just absolutely nailing it. Honestly, I expected TV to model to top out by now, and the fact that he has it is it's kind of awesome. It's kind of incredible. Yeah, something's gone wrong here for Noizel. I wasn't really seeing any moves I hated that she wasn't really forced to make, but... Um, this set up here. Just find that. That's good. Find another double and I mean, yeah. He's just he models in such a bad spot at this point. Any more garbage in the center? Nope, not quite. He has a 25% of chance of losing the game at any moment. I don't know what that was. Oh, he was trying to clear out the center column. Yeah, she just needs to keep the combos coming and uh, it'll be over for him soon. He can't get this column 5 4 down. Another piece of garbage there. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, I can't. I have nothing really bad to say. She's just uh, in such a good spot here. That was a nice find like that. This is the highlight reel on her part. Pimata's sort of made some space here on his board. We're going to see if that, uh, if he's able to do anything with it, but... As a quick note, I'd really like to see this red-yellow go right here, because, uh... Oh, I'd like to see it right here, if I could get the thing to come up. <laughs> right here, because I think it would, uh... Um, I think if this is where... If, 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 if this goes wrong anywhere, it's if this gets blocked off. So I really want to see her prioritize this setup here in the center to really uh, 
keep the pressure on and to keep making progress as well. It's just a great move for her. She can do that. Oh, she decides to be even more swaggy than that, actually. <laughs> so, hey, even better. issues with finding specific pieces to make progress here. It's just not coming, it looks like. Yeah. So you, this, I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward endgame for, for No Wizzle, barring any sort of crazy garb- excuse me, any crazy garbage shenanigans. Definitely. Say she needs to get this red yellow down. Now she's gonna try to find this blue horizontally, which she'll probably take the rest of her endgame for the most part horizontally, I think. Nice blue garbage, love to see that. And honestly, Hebemon is really rallied back. We're not analyzing his game, but uh, yeah, she definitely has to uh, pick up the pace on her endgame here. And it's not looking like this is gonna be easy to clear out, but she does have a lot of ways she can do it. We can expose this red here, and then she just needs to get this blue. She can either get it vertically and uh, let's actually just talk about her end game quickly here. She ex correctly exposed this, so she just needs a red piece here. She also has two different ways of getting this blue, although at this point I think one of them is going to be much easier than the other. She's going to, as she's looking to do with this red yellow, uh, put it down here so that she can expose this spot here to get a blue to finish the horizontal after she clears this red away. Um, the other option, if this got covered with garbage, um, would be to make a yellow horizontal setup this way, and then these blues would fall down as well. It's always important to look for every route you can on an endgame. Um, in this case, I think this is going to be a lot more difficult, just because she's got this weird traffic light in column 6, where these reds are not going to be easy to clear out horizontally. She's going to have to clear these yellows out of the way anyway, to make the red necessary, the red clear necessary, to drop this yellow down into this spot. To be able to make a horizontal so at that point getting that digging this out vertically to just get the last blue spot in there i uh, would be good oh yeah that's true steve rose points out red blue and column eight just finishes the whole thing yeah <laughs> i always seem to forget that there's two sides to horizontal somehow but yeah that's absolutely right <laughs> red blue here the blue drops down and that'll just end it right away so we'll see if she holds out for that but even if she doesn't if she she's still she's still interested in clearing out the uh this spot space uh, this space here because if she gets a red yellow she can just get this virus eliminated without having to worry about waiting for the setup she also uh that that might also might just never come so she might need to do like yellow red and then like use a red yellow here to clear this away and then the blue yellow in this spot to uh, do that so yeah a red blue would be perfect but it's always important to if you don't get the red blue to, to you know work towards a plan b um for exactly that reason See how she ends up doing it here. Also, because garbage could just fall in this column. And honestly, uh, this is a close one. Yeah, she ends up just taking the blue here. Luckily, doesn't get any garbage, but Hebe's really close. Is she gonna get this? Oh my god! Wow, that was so close! That was so close. She ended up making the... getting the red-yellow here to finish it out, because that red-blue, like I said, never showed up. Uh, and so she played a f correctly to get that blue out of there so that she could make this. If she hadn't done that and she had been stubborn and waited for the red blue, Hibimoto was about to win. He had the red yellow in the play field, ready to get the last viruses uh, right before he lost. Um, and if she had been any slower, then he she would have lost that game. So she played that end game really well. That's exactly why you have to have, you know, be mindful of multiple plans. So even if the red, you know, the red blue obviously is the win on the spot, but. You, this is Dr. Mario NES. You might not get that red blue pill. That might never come. And uh, Noizel obviously knew that, and she cleared it out on the other side to just take that blue virus by whatever means necessary. So well played by Noizel. Um, if she had played that any, you know, if she'd made any small mistake in that end game there, she was losing 100. percent 
So very good on Noizel to uh, to make that comeback, or to, not to make the comeback, but to make that end game and play it basically perfectly. So well done to her. She's gonna win game two, and let's move on to uh, game three. Okay, double yellows. Um, I think the best spot to put this is probably going to be here. That's the first place I'm looking just because you get this blue yellow set up in this little square here. Um, obviously this yellow column isn't going to contribute to a combo setup here, but it's certain. And you, even if in clearing this, uh, empty does not really help and matters at all. Maybe opens up a red blue option for you, but that's about it. This also doesn't really do much for you. I don't think so. I think the clear option is just to go here. You uh, contribute to these yellows. Nothing is being blocked. You have a blue-yellow double set up on the go. Any red-yellows can go here. and uh, Or yellow-blues. Well, well, yellow-blues, you have a setup for that over here. But red-blues are basically the only thing you can't really do anything about on this board. So we'll see if that's what the players go for. Let's check out what they did. Yeah, they both take that move. I don't really see any other move beyond that. This blue-yellow is probably going to go towards this combo setup here. And we'll see if we get another one after that. Not quite. They end up both. They end up playing it basically identically, and I agree with their plays. It's exactly how I would do it. Garbage unfortunately doesn't line up well for Noizel, and she's gonna fall behind her here. So now that she's had all this garbage fall, I'm really, really interested in getting like a T set up here, like this somehow. Whether that means like a yellow blue going like this, or excuse me, like this to form a platform, and then you could get like a double yellow uh, here, and then like yellow red, or sorry, the other way around, red yellow here, uh, and then like a yellow blue, and then like a yellow yellow or something to get this T because it'll unlock this column, it'll make another triple combo. Really, we just want this horizontal more than anything, but because this yellow vertical setup is here. Let's just make a T out of it. Why not? That's what I would be looking at, I think, in this space. But this double yellow isn't necessarily going to need to contribute since it's just at the wrong time. You could put it this way, which isn't horrible. You could also put it over here to have an instant combo set up if you wanted to do it like that. Um, but uh, we'll see how Noizel decides to play it. Yeah, she'll put it over there. And unfortunately, the garbage takes the combo away from her. Uh, yeah, Hibimato has just gotten off to a really early start here. I don't love this red-blue. I assume that must have been this drop. Uh, this game did not start out well for her, and it's not even really her fault. The garbage just fell in some really awkward spots. But she's starting to make uh, make some combos here finally, now that she's uh, had a second to breathe. And yeah, this yellow setup, unfortunately, never, the T setup I mentioned never really came to pass. And it's, unfortunately, it's going to block off a lot of her board here. This this is really not a great uh, garbage situation to have. It looks like she's already trying to work on it here. At a, in a hor very horizontal way. This is, sometimes, this is just what happens when you, uh, you just sort of lose the opening. Now she's sort of stuck playing on the back foot, but we see, like I've said, eventually the game hits an inflection point where you can swing the momentum back in your favor, so um, it's not like she has to just give up here, like this is already over. Um, so that was a great find from her. Loved that setup. Just watching her dig here is incredible. set up there i just want to go back a second to talk about like how exactly she got out of this situation because it looked really bad especially if you go back like to here even you'll see that very early she's already starting to do like horizontals here right and that's kind of the way you have to attack these vertical stacks horizontals are not just good for combo setups like obviously you could put like a blue here or something and then this yellow horizontal becomes a setup that you can knock down but more than anything in this spot, they're very important for um, just clearing these vertical stacks down. You can ignore them and you can dig deeper on the left side, but that would really put you in a bad position later on because you still have to answer this at some point. So you might as well do it right away. Uh, and the only way to really do that is through horizontals. Ideally, you'd be making combos as you do this. Um, but uh, yeah, you're going to see, we're going to watch this again and we're just going to see how 
It was will use this horizontals here. You know, I'm gonna make a yellow horizontal, which uh, I don't know if she's gonna be able to complete. I think she's gonna take this red, these out here so to get through. Bits another one. She finds some combos finally, and you know, you know, take your setups when you can get them. But yeah, she's just doing her best to, uh, to get horizontals here. That was a great uh, pill sequence for her. Now she's doing the loose horizontally, even going so far as to put this red blue here just to make a platform, just so she can get this horizontal and get the show on the road and, and start working on this right side. She's gonna get another red yellow setup. That was incredible to see that. Uh, it's really hard to see if you're not uh, familiar with it, but yeah, the yellows here, red, yellow, well, uh, two red yellows in these spots that she's gonna put them in here where she's put it and here. Um, horizontals fall and then these two pieces make another horizontal that's uh not a common setup you're gonna see but she finds it really quickly and it's very good at helping break down the, the right side so that she can get things and get her board in a better state while still putting pressure on her opponent so yeah she's uh she's playing this survival really well and that also sets up this blue horizontal so that she can set knock things down even further and she will take it And now that things have opened up a little bit, and at very least column six is looking a lot healthier, now she's starting to do more traditional, like, vertical setups, for sure. But she needed to make all those horizontals in order to even have the, the space to maneuver to actually start making, you know, the easier setups. I wonder if she's going to take use this horizontally? No, she just used the combo. That's okay. I would kind of like to see this yellow horizontal be done here on this side. But it's not easy because there's no platform here and there's not even anywhere you can hang a pill off of like column four to finish this yellow horizontal so maybe it's not great you could always put the double yellow like this and then the last spot for the horizontal has a space to go but you know that's also really dangerous and it's not even making a combo so it's really not honestly that might even just not be the correct play at the end of the day which when a whistle did could easily be way better than than making that suggestion she has time to to make this horizontal but whenever you get a double like where she had this double yellow here if i can go back to that i oh like i see this double yellow immediately i'm thinking like hey can i make a yellow horizontal somewhere oh look there's a yellow horizontal opportunity right here i could put this here and i can start breaking down this column especially because i don't see another great place to put it but uh you know there's more than, you know, not every, just because one move is best doesn't mean that there aren't several other moves that are almost as good or just as good, so. Yeah, she just ends up clearing the space out. But these sorts of horizontals, especially now that she gets another one, she finally does do that here, but now she has no platform, and this is suddenly very awkward, where she has this setup, and that's going to collect garbage on top of it, potentially, and she doesn't have a great way... To get to it even if she stacks yellows up like this um she doesn't quite have it unless she gets exactly a double yellow with these two yellow places and uh pieces in place I haven't been here did we see noizel win against umbrella she got it by half a second yes exact same we uh this was not on the stream this is a an off stream match that i re-recorded and did post on the youtube and that's the match that i decided to review just because i don't think a lot of people have seen it um, and I didn't even really watch the whole thing. I let it re-record and I went and got a drink or something or went to the bathroom. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so this is my first time analyzing as well. Yeah. But anyway, as I was saying, now that she has finally done it, I kind of wish she had taken it a little earlier than this. Because now, uh, even if she puts these yellows here, she needs exactly double yellow in this place to make a sweet, uh, sweet, sweet L. But if you don't get exactly that, then you have to do something janky like red, yellow, or blue, yellow, or something just to clear this out. And that's not great. So I don't even know if it's worth going for that. We'll see how she ends up playing it. She probably just stacks red, yellows in the center. She'll just take it to make a problem. That's right. uh, and she eventually <laughs> makes a platform here. That is a huge find for Noizel, for sure. Like I was saying, the big issue is there's no platform. She ends up doing this, uh, which is good because it makes a setup anyway. And then the double, she senses the double yellow coming at the right time. And she makes the horizontal. And this is actually not a combo at all, but 
it's definitely more important than it looks like doing horizontals like this even empty ones can be really important to get the stack down to a more manageable place again it's just sort of like an investment in your future um giving yourself more space down the line to uh to make more combos um so that you can uh, make a comeback in the end game combo goes for the l she could have just gotten uh, a double blue combo here uh if i can go back all the way to that the double blue is definitely open here uh nope this one it's definitely open here but uh she wanted to make horizontals and it will help her stack and her board health a lot more to go like this and then just do like a blue yellow piece right here um uh, so i actually totally agree with that not that doing this in the blue spot like if you were to make this move i would never fault anyone for doing that it's the quickest path to a combo this is going to send garbage but uh, it's just little things like this that uh, that really make a big difference, even if it doesn't seem like much. It's all about those small edges. Going for more horizontals to take this out. I did see a move there I wanted to just quickly mention. Uh, no. It was this red-yellow here. This red-yellow here, I kind of immediately thought, why don't we just put it like this? Because now we have that log set up, which is amazing, and it would take down so much of the stacks over here. Um, and there's really no other great place for this red-yellow. Uh, this red isn't really contributing to a combo uh, or anything like that. Unfortunately, um, Wizzle decides to go for this, which I think maybe she just made an error in the moment. Maybe she just didn't want to empty clear this red column here. But uh, I think setting up for the fat log would have been huge. Just a small thing that she missed. It's also, it's also a combo opportunity. In this She'll take this uh, vertical combo for sure. That's great. Oh, wow. Gonna go for it. yeah now she's looking to get this red horizontal out there because these yellows will drop down and they'll line up perfectly with the yellow virus here as well and then she can keep making progress on this stack she's just this whole game she's slowly but surely been making moves that sort of affect the uh the stack uh, and just lowering it column by column every column helps every column is important and the more you do it eventually she'll clear this whole column down and she'll actually have a more clear board so definitely uh Play I agree with. And she even gets an L out of that, which is huge. She's even going for this horizontal, and she's putting blue-red pieces to make platforms just to do it, because she knows how important it is. And look how much space she has on the right now because of all these horizontals she's been making. It's just excellent play. She's definitely starting to make the comeback here. She's now ahead in viruses, but it's far from over. I mean, all it takes is for Hibimoto to make a couple more combos and uh, things start looking messy on the side of things again. So at the very least though, she's made it even and I think a lot of it had to do with making that space on the right, even though it's far from being fully cleaned up here. Oh wow. Yeah, like yellow reds on the left, that's a simple setup. Unfortunately, she had empty clear that. She did have a combo set up there that she broke. I don't even know if there was maybe a better place to put this. I mean, do we really want to break this blue-red setup? A blue-red going like this is uh, uh, a combo right there. Even if you just put it uh, like... Uh, nope, not that color. Just like blue-red like this. You get a combo there. This yellow-blue could have just as easily gone maybe here. Uh, we don't like that. Just like here. And that would have been... You know, not a combo, but it also wouldn't have broken a setup either. I think maybe she was just thinking that 
the board health was more relevant in this spot. But uh, I mean, it's not that difficult of a setup to uh, to to um, to make. All you need is a blue red, and even if like yellow blocks you off here, you can still make the blue red setup down here. And even if the yellow blocks you off here, well, you can't make that, I guess. But uh, you know, it, it was it was uh, not like a risky setup to hold open for too too long. Heck, she could have even put the yellow blue like this. And then this double yellow coming, now that I see it, would have gone here. Even if she didn't see this coming, this is not an indefensible move to just put the yellow blue this way. At least this contributes to a setup. I think maybe she was just a little panicky and just did not want to uh, to risk things getting too messy and just wanted to take the safe move. I'm not really sure. Uh, again, hard to say when pe you don't know people's thoughts, but um, yeah, I feel like there must be a better move than this one. Well, that's up working out for her. She gets a sick triple setup out of all of that. And now she has a great opportunity to make a, another horizontal to bring down this 8 stack even more, give her even more room to maneuver. She has a red-yellow coming up, so hopefully what she'll do is go like this, and then she'll have a red-yellow, hopefully, or even a double red to complete the T setup. Um, and then she, this whole 8th column will come down as soon as this, uh, this red horizontal is made. And uh, then she can maybe even put yellow-reds up top up here to start making, like, uh, yellow red column here, something like that. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be huge. I'm sure that's what she's gonna do. Yep. There we go. And an even combo. I didn't even see that part. That's just gravy. That's huge. We got a nice little charity combo here. I think she's got this well in hand. Yeah, now that she's nearing the bottom of the board, she's a little less concerned about doing horizontals here because they're so much stacked up and they don't really make a great combo opportunity for her. So now she's just, I think, moving into her endgame, focusing on clearing viruses and and uh, opening the board up to get those final viruses and be able to get them cleanly. Meanwhile, he beats us at the top of the board. He'll probably top out before uh, Noah Zill is actually finished. But he's, uh, he's obviously very good definitely surviving as long as he can. Oh my god, he just believed that. I'm sorry, I just watched TV for a second because he's about to die. I just want to see how long he can survive for. We'll review, uh, she's luckily staying alive long enough for us to- oh no, he eventually pops out. So we won't get to watch the end of her endgame, but yeah. Uh, that- those horizontal- that horizontal play in the first half of, of Noizel's game really is what, I think, pulled her ahead to win this. She was in a really rough spot, I mean, like, she won from- let's go back all the way to the, uh, the first half of this. Like, look at this position that she was in. Look at this. This is horrible. Obviously, Hebe's not that far ahead, but like, how could you look at this and think, oh yeah, I'll come back from that, that's easy. Well, she just did it one column at a time, as I said. We're not going to go through it again, but yeah, like, she was able to find little horizontals uh, to just slowly bring those stacks down and eventually make progress on the viruses underneath. Um, just, yeah, that's that's what you have to do when you're playing from behind. That's why horizontals are so strong, um, why they're, they're something you have to incorporate in your gameplay eventually. Um, if you never get used to looking for horizontals like these, then you'll never be able to bail yourself out of these kinds of situations the way Noizel did. And, uh, you know, it just, it's not even really her fault she got here. She just kind of got put in this place because the, the garbage fell a certain way that made her piece set awkward. But uh, she played it like a champ, and she figured out how to, uh, even if it was slowly but surely, how to break down this right side so that she could come back while still making combos to keep Hebe... Uh, in check while she was trying to do that. So yeah, amazing play from Noizel for that game three. So uh, let's go on to game four. If I can get there. Uh, whoops, I skipped a little too far ahead. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I guess I can't uh, hold the button down. Yeah, here we go. Okay, yellow blue. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's not much to talk about here. This one looks pretty obvious to me. Just yellow blue in the center. 
complete the double setup, you've got a red-yellow setup already halfway done on the left. You've got blue-red position on the right. This is a pretty generous uh, opening board, so uh, no need to make things complicated. Just take the yellow-blue. I expect both players to make this move. I'm not even... Uh, I, don't, I can't even think of anything else you would do on this board, so let's see what they do. Yeah, straight down. Interesting that she cleared this out, but... Uh, even though Noizel cleared out the double yellow here, with the double yellow here, she still has a red-yellow setup, and you'll see her go for it this way. So honestly, this isn't even that bad. Might even be the best move, to be honest. still finding good moves. Now, it's important to note that, like I said, there are five games tonight, and uh, this is game four, which means Noizzle, uh we already know is gonna lose this one, but seeing this opening, it's hard to imagine that. Like, she's just uh, in a good spot. That's an unfortunate misdrop here in column one, but um, she's still, like, her board looks good. It is starting to get away, uh, not away from her, but definitely, you can see Hibimoto pulling ahead a little bit. They both find uh, some pretty big combos here, but she's, she's, Keeping pace with them pretty well overall, I would say. So it's it'll be interesting to see sort of where this game turns and maybe why that might have happened. Hmm. As I take a drink of water, there it is. That's where the game turned. Look at that. And that's why you I always want to prioritize my center columns and clearing them out as soon as possible. Because this piece of garbage here is poison. This is death right here. This yellow is the worst thing that could have possibly happened. And I can't tell you how many games I've lost to something like this. It's not insurmountable, but wow, what a huge setback this, this thing is. Um, if this isn't her undoing this game, then I will be shocked. I, I'm not saying she's going to top out right here on the spot, but she ha it's almost impossible to get pills over to the left without blinking now. And... Uh, it just puts a huge, it just splits your board in half and with no good horizontal opportunities to like break out of it. So I, yeah, I don't know what she's going to do here. We're just going to have to watch and find out because that's just really bad for her. Yeah. And another piece of garbage. Yeah. And then that's the other problem. Any garbage drop, 25% chance the game just ends on the spot. That's really unlucky for Noizel. Um, I would like, since this game wasn't very long, I want to kind of go back a bit and just see like where this where this happened, like where this went wrong. Like she had the red yellows here. This blue garbage falls here was unfortunate. She does the right thing. She just tries to make a setup out of it. She gets a blue. She gets a double red. She just never gets the blue. She made a combo, but yeah, a triple just fell right in this spot. So. I don't know if Hibimoto knew that she was building up in the center and did that on purpose. Probably not. It's usually just a good policy to make as big of a combo as you can. And he's certainly capable enough of doing it. But uh, yeah, that's just really unfortunate. If any of those pieces had been blue, she would have been set. And if this garbage had fallen on the other side, she probably also would have been fine. But uh, yeah, she just got blue dreaded. And I, f I don't have the data to back this up, but I swear blue is more rare than the other colors. In my own anecdotal experience, I can't explain how many times that I've been waiting on blue for a setup and then it doesn't come and then I, it, I get covered by garbage. It just happens so often. I can't imagine it's a coincidence. It just can't be. I feel like the RNG in this game is so crazy that why wouldn't there be a bias towards blue or against blue rather from seeing it? So maybe it's superstition. I don't have, I, you know, I can't prove it. You know, I don't have the data to back this claim, but uh, yeah, um, I feel like people get screwed on blue setups way more often than any other color. I feel like red yellows are just a dime a dozen when all you need is a blue. I, I can't explain it, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't really change anything. No whistle did in here in, in these moves here for right, right from the blue garbage that she got on the spot here all the way to, you know, put setting up to try to clear it out. And then, you know, the yellow garbage coming at the top. I think it was just basically unlucky. There is maybe one other thing she could have done. I'm going to go back and just take a look just to see what else she, could have been possible here. Like, if you could see this, you could consider maybe putting the blue-red this way and just making a horizontal setup out of it. 
it's a little awkward because this yellow's column is in the way and maybe you have to like yellow blue with the next piece to just get it out of the way and then you can go you can fill in the blue spots here to make a combo and maybe that's a little less susceptible to garbage get blocking the way she built it up vertically and yeah i mean that is maybe another way that she could have done this in a safer way is to just go for a horizontal but i mean she sees a blue yellow in the next slot all she needs is one more blue after that i couldn't falter if you play as long as you're playing fast enough that should never be an issue so, I mean, maybe, like, I don't think that she did anything terribly wrong, but going for the horizontal here technically would have been a little bit better, um, if not a little more awkward. I think given it's it's got to be close. We, we could argue, I could go back and forth on this all night, I think. But if there was anything she could have done differently, I think the blue-red maybe like this, trying to get a horizontal setup, would have been a little less susceptible to... Uh, to garbage falling on it and ruining the combo, but uh, and ruining the setup and and blocking her off at the top. But uh, yeah, I mean, retrospects twenty twenty. If if you know that the piece after this is going to be blue, then this blue red is definitely the best move. If you know you're going to get the blues to clear it right away, because it'll be way slower if you're going to get blues immediately to take this yellow down and waste the blue dropping it here in this spot to uh, to try to make the horizontal. So I don't know. I think it just depends on what you get, and uh, it's, there's no way to know that sometimes. So it's just kind of uh, RNG based on that in that way. Uh, there's not really much you can do about it. I, you're gonna have games like this that just end this way, and uh, it it always stings to lose like this. But uh, yeah, there's really not much she could have done about it except maybe tried to play more horizontally in the center to be safe. But I can't even really falter for that. So. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to say on that one. Sometimes garbage falls in the perfectly bad spot and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, there is still definitely a luck element in this game and that's a per the perfect example of that, I think. She just doesn't get a blue or even two more pills. That's enough to, to put her out of it. One more combo and she can, he gets it in the exact lucky spot that he needs to win the game. Well, that's unfortunate for Noizel. I don't think there's much more she could have done on that. Um, and with that, we'll move into the final game. Hyphenated says, looks like blue is in fact the least likely color. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I did not, like I said, I don't have the data on that, but uh, yeah, I, that wouldn't shock me in the slightest because anecdotally, I can tell you, I, I, I feel that. I feel that blue is the least likely color. <laughs> Red only slightly more common and yellow quite a bit more common. Okay. Yeah, that tracks, definitely. I would have thought that red was the most common color, to be honest, but uh, but I believe that. But red and blue are both actually not too far apart. That's interesting. Interesting data, for sure. I didn't even actually know that. Red only slightly more common than blue. Huh. Yeah, I, I could believe that, I suppose. But uh, hmm. I thought blue was honestly by far the least common because it always seems to be blue for some reason for me. I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's let's look at the last game here. All right. Wow. GitHub. Oh, it's a dimwit uh, page. Yeah, that makes sense. I buy. Uh, I would believe anything dimwit tells me about this game. So yeah, that that tracks. If you want to see the the details, I won't get into it right now. But yeah, uh, check out that page. That should tell you everything you and you ever wanted to know and more probably about this game and the RNG. All right. Anyway, this top line sucks. I hate this. No red access whatsoever and a red yellow in the next box. Uh, what do we do here? Um, one thing you could do is like tuck into here, but like this doesn't really contribute to a combo. It doesn't really expose any red, like gives it a nice home here. But if you get any more red pieces, you'll just be back in the same position you were in before with nowhere to really put it. Um, yeah, this is really tough really not sure like you could put it maybe like this and then you would have like a red blue setup going and you'd have sort of a good home where you have red yellow opportunities on the right side and a red blue opportunities on the left side um obviously the second red yellow this way would uh would clear out the yellows you'd lose your combo opportunity but if you get a red blue and you put it like this now you're really cooking you can if you keep getting red blues you have a setup this way uh or if you get red yellow now you actually can put it like this uh nope not that one <laughs> you can put it like this and you uh you're ready to combo here so i think that might be the best option um 
it's really hard to say. I mean, you could make a similar move on this side, I guess. But something like this, where you have a red splitting a blue column and a yellow column so that you get more combo opportunities depending on what comes next. I think that's really the best you can do on this board here. Um, so we'll see what these uh, what these guys do. Yeah, that's pretty much my thought here. This is actually a really interesting take from Hebe, just to comment on his game uh, very, very briefly here. Um, the idea on this move, which I didn't really see at first, is that if if these blues eventually get cleared out horizontally, these yellow reds will fall to onto the yellow reds beneath it, and it'll make a combo. So he's he might he'll probably just put this yellow red, uh, not that color. <laughs> he'll put the yellow reds up here, and then he will have to clear these yellows out in order to get there. But he's just sort of investing in his future rather than trying to make something happen on the spot like Noizel is. Personally, I prefer to do what Noizel is doing. I like to try to get a, that first combo as quickly as possible. Um, and I don't really love the idea of investing in your future this early on unless you have absolutely no other option so that you can find and no other moves you can play. But uh, I think No Izzle makes a better move here. In, uh, that's, that's just personally, that's what I think. Um, so let's see how it plays out. She gets several more moves over him because of that. He's already at the top of his board. Wow, he's so lucky. Very lucky that this was a blue piece. If Noizel had gotten a red or a yellow in this spot, uh, just like that, it would have been the reverse of last game where Hibimoto is now stuck with this horrendous board here. So that's the difference one piece of garbage can make. That's part of why combos are so strong, because if you get a lucky piece of garbage that really disrupts your opponent, especially in the early game, it can just have a huge advantage it just ripples throughout the rest of the game unfortunately that's not what happened here so we'll see uh we'll see how things go as so we continue on here. It's looking kind of rough not a lot of opportunities but she does find this combo here so that's great yeah he just turning on the jets here finding more combo opportunities and she's just gonna have to make some safe uh, horizontal plays like she like she was doing in game three. And she finds another one for another combo. It's exactly what we were talking about in game three. You, this uh, how you come back from these bad situations. Wow, this is a really rough spot for her. When the sides get spired up like this, she really has nowhere to go here. Uh, I don't even see any real combo opportunities outside of like a double red coming up here to make an L. Um, she can put this red yellow she's about to get, she can put it in this spot like that, but she doesn't even get a combo out of it. It will help bring the stack down a little bit, but it's not a great place to be. Uh, I, she, she supposedly comes, well, she definitely comes back and wins from this spot, so I'm really interested to see how that goes. Uh, I do think there's quite a bit of time left. Uh, in this game, so she's in it for the long haul, and she does eventually somehow come back to win this. Wow, just at the top of the board. Finding combos, even now. Oh, that red yellow yeah, garbage falling here was very lucky. Wow, looking at it from this position, it's hard to imagine how she wins this, but uh, yeah, that's crazy. Finding more T setups, love that. It's so next level to see the survival and combo play. Uh, putting it all together like this. Find another no way to combo from that horizontal. Yeah, you need and suddenly she's in a relatively even state again. She's a little behind in viruses, but like they're about the same height on the board. That was incredible. She <laughs> She found some insane moves in there. Uh, that was that was absolutely nuts. Like I think um, many lesser players would have just died in that situation straight up. But uh, she did get a little bit of lucky RNG with some of the doubles that she got to get uh, T setups. But man, you, even if you get lucky, you have to be able to find that stuff. So very amazing, very good play to survive here from Noizel because she easily could have lost for it right there on the spot if she hadn't found some of the horizontals and some of the setups that she had. That was crazy. Yeah, 
fighting even more. That was a weird setup. Doesn't take this horizontal. Um, it looks like the combo will, uh, the garbage will finish your combo anyway. the yellow garbage here but I, I just saw that she uh she has this blue red that she drops here of course and she gets a double red and now she has this blue or no sorry yeah she had the double red after she did this she ends up putting the double red in this spot but i'm surprised she didn't just take a combo here i guess she's um just maybe trying to make the red yellow setup here um now that she feels a little more oops now she feels a little more comfortable uh, with uh, her position. Stop hitting the wrong button, please. Oh my goodness, I cannot. <laughs> I'm fat fingering here, you guys. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do uh, so that she can eventually get this set up like this, but I don't know. Personally, I always tend to go for the, the taking the combo as soon as I can just to keep the pressure going. I think the tempo is just so much, so much more important than uh, keeping all these setups open. It's important to have more multiple options on your board and, and, and prepare for that but um if you have the ability to just get a combo right now and you pass up on it it can really come back to bite you and you kind of see that here in a moment where uh, the yellow garbage falls and he's going to cover up this setup here she ends up going vertical with that one so that's good could have been maybe a horizontal there but uh it all works out for her amazing play with this double blue to see this blue piece here and to recognize that she has a huge combo set up here. If she gets the, when she puts this blue down, she's gonna end up getting a triple. Again, whenever you get a double pill, look for opportunities for horizontals because the doubles are so powerful for that exact reason. They just make horizontals much easier than it would to have to get the exact split pills that you need. Um, especially in a case like this, where really the double blue is the only piece that makes this clean. So very good play from her. Tries to drop the cross, she just extends the combo, that's very good. Yeah. Uh, in a situation where she looked so far behind, she's really turned the momentum around here. Just a little thing I noticed here as well. Uh, this red falls. Now that she has a red yellow, she's we saw her just sort of take the combo like that and make the L. However, because this red fell here, she does have an option to actually uh, just go with like a red yellow like this and try to extend it a little bit and go for a triple. Um, in this spot, even if she were to um, uh, to do this, it also even if she doesn't get red yellows after this, she also can put a blue over here, or even if it's not a double blue, just blue in a garbage color. And that will drop the whole stack down and give her actually a triple. So I think that would have been better in this case just to extend it um, because she has multiple options to extend it. But that is really difficult to see. I didn't even see this blue opportunity at first when I thought of this move. Um, but, uh, you know, I think she just wanted to get the horizontal down as quickly as possible here because she knows she's going to get a triple regardless. She's going to get the L plus this reds, these reds here. You don't want to get too fancy because that's... Uh, you know, if she goes for this and then maybe gets blocked by garbage, that wouldn't be great. But I think it's pretty safe to extend the combo on this spot. Uh, they're looking pretty even now all of a sudden, although her Noizel's board health is way better here. No, Humimoto's got a huge mess to clean up, but that's not to say that he won't have an opportunity to uh, sort of flip the momentum around at some point in the future here.
Yeah, not seen many, uh, seen much to talk about here. So this red has fallen. Maybe this double blue will go across again. I see this double blue. I'm looking for horizontal opportunities, and I think maybe we can just go here. Now yellow pieces can go on top, and we can extend this combo even further. Uh, and you have it's open ended on either side to to finish out the horizontal. So I really like that play. I wonder if that's what she'll do, or if she'll just do something more straightforward and just go for like a double blue here or something. We'll see what she does. Oh, I guess this garbage is gonna win. But she can still put it across here. She looks to make this horizontal too. Yeah, that also works. I hadn't really seen that and it's working out for. Her. Although it does it is a shame that this is all blocked off now. Yeah, I like this horizontal opportunity for her. I was just gonna point that out, but she beat me to it. No whistle's very good at that, I find. As, as she has a strength, that's definitely it. It's just finding horizontals. Uh, I think every top player needs to be good at that, but I find that uh, No Whistle in particular is good at finding those horizontal opportunities for sure. Like exactly what I just saw there. Like I didn't even think of that. I wasn't even paying attention to this blue down here, but this is a huge spot for this double blue. She identifies it immediately and goes for it and gets a huge combo out of it. That's a quad. Fall on Hebe Mata's side now. Take a double here, and Hebe's looking like he's in trouble here. Meanwhile, this garbage is pretty tame for her. She's going to take her easy doubles and oh, make that a triple as she drops it into a cross. That's sick. And now she's pretty firmly in endgame here, and she does not have a lot on her board, and she owes a lot of that to her horizontal play, I think. I like, We haven't been watching Hebe's game, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's not doing... Uh, she's not taking these horizontal options with the same uh, priority that she is. I think she prioritizes them way higher, and it's really paying off for her. Yeah looking good. She's going to get a charity combo here. I don't think there's any more garbage coming her way. Yeah. This is the last bit. Yeah, so I mean, this is a pretty straightforward endgame here. Again, she doesn't have a lot of garbage or any crazy spires to worry about. This blue here, I would say, is probably going to be taken horizontally. Uh, we definitely want to clear these reds out. Uh, and probably putting this red-yellow like this so that we can get a red-blue here and make a combo out of it. Um, we could even... Maybe find a way to sneak a blue piece in here so that we can get a T when it drops. That's also an option. Um, this red is going to be kind of problematic. It's got a yellow on all three sides of it. Uh, so that's going to be a little difficult to get rid of. But uh, honestly, a double yellow is coming. She could just put this double yellow like right here to make a combo setup and also liberate this red and expose it again. So she's th she's really, you know, got a lot of room to maneuver, a lot of options to clear this endgame. Um, I think it's probably just a matter of time given how far behind the motto is. And she'll get this T for sure. This red is still becoming pretty difficult. She's clearing these yellows away to sort of make her clear this red. She's already thinking about this red before she's cleared on the other viruses, which is great. She's gonna get super stun locked here. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. This blue gets covered. She still has to worry about making combos here, because if she doesn't, then it's going to give Hebe the uh, the room to come back and really put the hurt on her. Yeah, she's... well, she is clearing com uh, these viruses maybe a little too liberally, I think, because uh, it's really giving Hebe Bottle the chance to come back here. You can see it. She's, there's no room to do anything, because she's just constantly stunlocked. And it's going to be stunlocked again. That's so frustrating. If I'm Noizel, I'm like probably cursing at the screen right now. <laughs> this is brutal. And was just like that, he be Amato's into an endgame. So this is what I mean. She probably should have prioritized combos a little more if we go back before all this crazy stunlock happened. Like when we were in this spot here, obviously this fell. This blue red. Well, it's not going to be covered here. I think she gets a, a pill to drop this. She drops it over here to just clear it up. 
honestly, this almost certainly should have gone here. I'm just going to make a triple and it's going to break the red setup. But like you need, she needs a combo. She needs something to put the pressure back on Hibimato and just sort of end his, uh, his stun locking streak so that she can actually make some proper moves to, to actually get to the end game. Um, because it, this is a perfect example of why you need to make combos all the time, even in an end game situation like this, it looked like she was so far ahead, but given all the ammo Hibimato had on his side in order to, uh, to combo back at her, um, well, I mean, we'll watch it again and you'll see it, but, um, she just, uh, she gets to clear these viruses away, but at what cost? Now this blue and this red are completely stranded in there. She's about to get absolutely dumped on for, like, a full 20, 30 seconds, something like that. Not counting a couple of, uh, different viruses here. And things are just quickly getting out of hand. Yeah, that's rough. Again. Finds a combo finally, that's gonna be really important. But now he's cleared off so much of his board that the garbage is way less painful. If she had just taken that combo earlier, when she had, had that opportunity, I just want to point this out. When she had the opportunity to take the combo here with uh, this piece, get it in just a second. I just want to see exactly what his board looks like. She takes it here. Look how much more stuff is on his board. She had w it has way more opportunity to do damage uh, to his combo setups and everything if she just takes this combo right now. But uh, if she waits on that and saves it for later, he gets time to clear things away, make more combos. And then by the time she finally does get the combo, her board, his board is so far down that like it doesn't even matter. This is the next time she gets a combo. And his board is so empty that it barely does any damage to him. That's... That's exactly, that's, I mean, I've, I've used the term tempo a couple of times here, and it's not a term I hear people use a lot. I don't know if people know what I mean by that, but basically, uh, tempo is, has a lot to do with, uh, like how, uh, tempo is a lot, uh, it's, it's a pretty nebulous term. I can admit that, but, um, it's to do with, you know, taking opportunities when you have them and, uh, making, you know, making moves that, uh, like taking taking opportunities when you get them and doing them as much damage as possible uh, when you have the opportunity at the right time. Uh, so she loses so much tempo here by n passing up on this combo. Um, it could have done so much more damage to him at that time, but because she didn't miss that opportunity, Hibimato got to just go all the way down his board, stun lock her for like 30 seconds. If she had just taken the combo when she could have, she could have avoided all of that and she would have been in a way better spot. So it's a huge swing to... Uh, to miss out on that so that that mistake is probably a lot more uh impactful than it looked uh just because of that so it's it's yeah it, it's it's a perfect example of why you need to always be comboing even in your end game because the she will eventually win this game but it could have been probably a lot easier if she had just taken the combos when she had the chance Finally putting some combos back down, so that's good. She's making some empty clears here. I would have liked to see her do more um, comboing setups. I'm sure there's better ways she could have gone about comboing. Man, this is looking rough. I see she's just waiting for blues, though, so that she can uh, clear this out. Unfortunately, this yellow is going to block. She'll get a double yellow. She should be trying to clear this. She'll put the blue in position. She'll take her drop. She'll cover over this to protect from garbage and this blue should end it well done and that's going to be no whistle taking down hebe motto this is a huge win for no whistle absolutely awesome but yeah that was really close like she luckily was able to find a way to clear that blue virus at the end but uh yeah that she i feel like she might have almost given that game up just because she uh was not willing to take that combo when she had the chance can't be missing stuff like that um Again, like I was saying earlier, small edges are huge in this game. You have to be, uh, yeah. If you if you just try to focus on little things like that, I think you'll see you can see a lot of progress even at low levels of play, especially at low levels of play. Those small edges end up being huge, um, and uh, and you'll start winning games a lot easier. I think you'll find if you uh, if you keep trying to look for uh, you know 
just making sure you're not giving up combo opportunities when you have them, uh, making sure that uh, you're looking for horizontals when you can get them. Just little things like that make a huge difference. And uh, I think in Noah's play, you can see where that comes in handy a lot. And at the end there, you can also see where um, it almost cost her, actually. But uh, luckily, she was able to pull it out. Um, this is a huge win for no whistle. Um, she's, uh, she, I know she really wants to beat snipe. That's the goal, but in tournament, no less, but, um, yeah, she Mata was a, definitely a big win for her as well. She's definitely one of the best players in the world. And, uh, um, I hope, uh, that was clear from, from the play here tonight. So I, I was really happy to get to finally review one of her games so that we could see, uh, what she's got and to see her do it against one of the best in the, in the business, he Mata. I think this tonight was a really big example of uh, of small edges and horizontal play. I, I really liked, uh, enjoyed watching that match. I hope you guys did as well. But that's going to do it for me. We'll be back next week with another VOD review. So keep uh, keep your eye out for that. But until then, uh, be safe, stay warm, and don't skip out on your monthly checkup, everybody. I'll see you next week.